We've unboxed it, we've given it a first hands-on, we've compared it with the LG Optimus G and the Galaxy Note 2. But before we send the HTC Droid DNA down to resolution expert Brandon Miniman for more videos and editorials, we need to compare it with one other device, a very important device and a very popular one. I'm Michael Fisher, this is PocketNow.com, and this is the HTC Droid DNA versus the Samsung Galaxy S3 American Edition. We don't want to go on forever with this one, and we've already done in-depth reviews on both of these devices, so we'll keep this confined to a few key areas. Build, display, benchmarks, and camera. Kicking things right off with build quality, these devices almost couldn't be more different. The Galaxy S3, ours here is the Verizon version, is curvaceous and smooth, coated in hyperglaze gloss and weighing in at a featherweight 133 grams. The Droid DNA sends a completely different message, adding nine more grams to the equation and trading all that glossy sheen for a matte finish, soft touch back. As a result, the DNA feels more substantial, rugged, and less prone to breakage. Whether that's true or not is up to the drop testers to decide. We're just talking perception here. Moving on to the display, it should come as a surprise to no one that the DNA's display absolutely owns the panel on the Galaxy S3. That's not because Samsung makes a bad display. It's just that the 1080p 440 ppi panel on the DNA is in a class entirely by itself. The 5-inch SLCD3 on the DNA reproduces colors better instead of oversaturating them like the 4.8-inch Super AMOLED panel on the SGS3, and the resolution and pixel density are much higher, as well as the viewing angles. About the only area the Galaxy S3 wins is on the depth of the black reproduction. To be perfectly clear, Samsung's Galaxy S3 display is still wonderful, but the DNA is currently unbeatable in this regard. For the benchmark comparison, we're comparing benchmark scores in five apps. Remember that even though both of these devices include 2 gigs of RAM, their processors are completely different, with the American SGS3 running on a dual-core Qualcomm S4 and the Droid DNA packing the quad-core Qualcomm S4 Pro. We may have more detailed gaming comparisons in the future if our focus shifts, but for now, we're just playing the numbers game. In Quadrant Standard, the SGS3 scored a 4953, and the DNA scored 7844. In Antutu, the SGS3 scored a 6806, and the DNA scored 14514. In Smartbench, the SGS3 scored 2786, while the DNA scored 4677. The SunSpider stock browser test, where lower is better, SGS3 scored a 2150.8, and the DNA scored 1140.3. And finally, in Geekbench 2, the SGS3 scored a 1311, while the DNA scored 1830. And because we like to know we're able to get into our apps quickly on our smartphones, just one or two app launches here. Now keep in mind that these devices are also running different software. The Verizon SGS3 is still stuck on 4.0.4 with TouchWiz Nature UX, while the Droid DNA runs 4.1.1 Jellybean with HTC Sense 4 Plus. So let's see if we can jump into the camera here and see if we can detect any difference. We like to be able to sh make sure we can capture those moments when they arise. One, two, three. No noticeable difference. Viewfinder launches in about the same amount of time. Let's make sure we can make our phone calls properly. One, two, three. Boom. Dialer is up at exactly the same time. Let's try a third-party app. We'll get a little more social with things. Let's try Twitter. One, two, three. Twitter loads in exactly the same amount of time. And the internet browser. Stock browser on each. One, two, three. Excellent. And while we are in the browser, we're going to wait for the pages to load here. Uh, we're not getting an auto load on Pocket Now, so we will just go ahead and cheat that. While we're in the browser here, we'll go ahead and do a text reflow check. We are not, not testing speed on loading, just testing re-rendering. Really, really, really impressive on the Droid DNA. As we've gotten used to in the past few comparison videos in the review, we can see that there is absolutely no problem, despite the much higher resolution with this device, 
in its text reflow capabilities and it's clearing up that text, it is just absolutely butter, even on a relatively heavy page, such as ours with animations going and so on and so forth. But responsiveness on the SGS3 lags just a little bit behind the DNA. The device takes a little bit longer to re-resolve that, uh, that text, but it's not terribly significant. You are just going to be waiting another couple beats for the page to redraw itself. As far as the camera goes, there's unfortunately no comparison. Both devices deliver excellent software features and a whole host of options, but while we actually like HTC's viewfinder software better, the quality of the DNA's images lag behind the Galaxy S3's. Both cameras are 8 megapixel shooters, but the SGS3 handles low light better and renders crisper images overall, also taking the edge in video quality. Again, we really like HTC's innovations on the software side of the viewfinder, and it delivers good performance and ample outdoor lighting, but in any other circumstance, it really suffers, where the SGS3 cameras doesn't. These are both excellent smartphones with their own high and low points, but it's very obvious that the DNA is the newer phone in several respects, most notably, of course, its display and more powerful processor. We also like the better build quality of the HTC product. Still, the Galaxy S3 has some key advantages in battery life, where it edges out the DNA with a removable battery of higher capacity, and the Galaxy S3 also features expandable storage, whereas with the DNA, customers are stuck with 16 gigs for the life of the device. The choice between the best display and processor on the market and excellent build quality versus a less physically appealing but proven more versatile product might be an annoying one, but it's one that customers choosing between these two devices are going to have to make. Guys, that's going to do it for this comparison. If you haven't tuned in already, make sure and check out our full review and our other comparisons of the HTC Droid DNA. Follow us on Twitter. PocketNowTweets is the official account. Follow me on Twitter if you like. I'm at Captain2Phones. That's Captain, the number two, phones. If you'd like to hear us discuss this device, other devices, uh, every device on the market, tune in weekly to the PocketNow Weekly podcast. Make sure you throw us a thumbs up here on YouTube if you like the video. And if you have something to say, leave us a comment on the post at PocketNow.com. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.